everyone. Um, it's Miss Nina. I'm back for another drawing. So today, in honor of Easter, we're going to draw Rachenka the Goose from Rachenka's Eggs by Patricia Palico. It's a really great story with beautiful illustrations. Um, it's set in Russia at Easter, and it's about a goose who lays beautiful eggs. And then the goose flies away because it's a wild goose and it leaves one last egg and that's the one that hatches a baby goose that will stay with babushka forever. So we're gonna draw that. This is the goose. This is the basket full of eggs. Um, it looks complicated and difficult, but I'm here to tell you guys that it is not. So maybe for really young kids, it might be challenging. Um, but they surprise me all the time. So let's get started. I'm going to fold my paper just like I always do. And you guys, I just got a new microphone. I'm hoping that makes it um, more easy to understand me. I have heard that um, my uh, sound wasn't great. Not really is because I haven't had a proper microphone, just the one on the camera. So. Uh, hopefully this will be a little bit better for you. So to get started, I'm going to start with the top of the basket. So I'm going to go below my center. This is my center line right here. I'm going to go below my center line here because I don't want the basket to take up too much room. I want to have plenty of room for my goose. So I'm going to start down here, but I'm going to use up most of the width of the paper. So again, a basket. We drew one just the other day. Um, I'm actually going to just start with the top of the basket. I'm going to go ahead and create the bottom of the basket too. Okay, and stop there. And then I'm going to put my eggs in the basket. So whenever you're drawing, you have to draw from the front to the back of the picture. So foreground first and work your way back. So the eggs that are in the front are going to be here. Now, your eggs do not have to be as many or the same as my eggs. There is no need for that. Just put a few eggs in your basket because um, later you're going to decorate them. So remember, however many eggs you're putting in here, you're going to have to come back in and draw designs on them. Now, you can draw the designs with your pen and then color them, or you can just do it with color. You could make them solid colors, but definitely make them bright and colorful because that's the idea with the story. So there's my eggs. Um, they sort of look like rolls or something, but don't worry because once you start adding designs, here I'll show you, you're going to add the designs by curving them around your egg. We'll make it a lot more obvious that they are Easter eggs and they are decorated. So don't forget when you make your designs to curve because the eggs are curved, okay? So I'll leave that for now and come back to it or I'll just leave it. It's not really um, important for the drawing, the main part of the drawing. And I usually do that at the end. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to start making my goose. So I'm going to make a curved line here and stop, a short curved line, okay? And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make the goose's beak because the beak is coming down a little bit in front of the body. Okay, that's the top part of the beak. That's the bottom part of the beak. You can make the nostril here. Okay, just a little teardrop shape. And then I'm going to make the goose's head and it's going to curve or actually curve back. The, the goose's head's going to be here and then the neck is going to curve back toward the body. Okay. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the net, the head, right? And then go down a little bit and make the neck and that's going to curve here. I know it seems strange right now, but you'll see it pulls together. Then this part here is part of the neck. Okay, so now you have a goodly bit of your goose underway. I'm just gonna 
go like this. And now you have a neck and a body, right? What you wanna do now is start adding the wings and the tail. So the first wing I'm gonna put right next to where the goose is, uh, this side of its body. Okay, so come up. And then you can make these shapes right here. These are the wing tips, okay? The feathers on the wing tips. I'm gonna put its other wing back on this side, similar, very similar, okay? The wing tips, the feathers on the edge of the wing, right? And now behind it, back here, I'm gonna put the tail, okay? So this and this are part of its tail. So now you have its body, its goose, neck, head, beak, tail, two wings, okay? So that's the basic outline. Now you're gonna start turning it into a goose and not just shapes. So let's start with this eye. And don't forget to leave a little white spot for your eye. I'm gonna put this shape here because it's different shades of brown and white. I'm gonna, um, start adding these feathered shapes. Now Patricia Palico in her drawing has these beautiful feathers um, and it really depends on what kind of media you're using. You could just at this point switch to your colored um, markers or colored pencils if you're using those um, or you can keep going with your black line marker. If you're using pencil you might wanna at this point switch to marker. So now I'm gonna make some of these feathers in the wings. This is the kind of drawing that I really like to use a thinner marker for. If you're using too thick of a marker, it's going to be difficult to do all this detail. And also for younger kids, I would not recommend doing the details. I would recommend at this point switching to coloring. Um, but for older kids, say third grade and up, they can, they can do this easily. So you can just do that. Let's do some more over here. Now when you go to color your goose, don't just make the whole thing dark brown. You really need to use different colors of brown or black or whatever color you're using, but use different colors so that you can show the different parts of it. Otherwise it will just look like a blob. So I'm kind of skipping ahead here with some of this. And you can be as detailed as you'd like or as undetailed as you'd like. But I like the idea of adding these details in ink. And you've noticed that even though I'm not drawing on the whiteboard at school like I usually do with a marker, and I know I make you guys use Sharpies and sometimes you want to use a pencil, but as you can see, making small mistakes on your drawing, I do it all the time. It's no big deal. You just keep going. It saves so much time and fuss and bother if you're not erasing all the time. Okay, so that's some of my goose texture. And like I said, you can do as much or as little of that as you'd like. And that, I'm 
I'm just going to do some simple, simple um, designs here, but feel free to make them as elaborate as you'd like. It's fun and easier than decorating real eggs. Okay, so for your basket, around the top, I'm just going to make a simple um, design here, and I'm going to show you um, how to make it look curved and how to make it look woven. We did that with Baby Moses basket a little bit, so we're going to do something really similar here. Um, let's see. Curve your lines. Okay, these need to be curved. If they are not curved, your basket will look flat and two-dimensional. They will. It will not look curved and realistic. And then I'm curving these too. This is actually a really good project for somewhat older kids who want to work on creating um, some dimensionality in their drawings, some perspective. Um, so as you come toward the center, you're gonna send those curves off in the other direction. So these curves go this way, these curves go this way, and they flatten out in the center. Can you see how I'm doing that? So this is gonna make it look woven. And I'm going to show you something else. When I go to color this, and I'm just going to do it with the black marker, um, but I would probably go ahead and make these lines here. These show that the basket is woven and it's going in here from the weaving. So you can see that immediately it starts to look more dimensional and less flat. So the same way we use lines curving around these to show that they are round and not flat. And the same way we made feathers to give this texture, we're gonna give the basket texture too. And also show that it is not flat. So these are great tricks for the older student. Or even there might be some adults who want to try doing something that is a little bit more um, realistic looking. Um, that is definitely not my usual aim. I aim for recognizable, um, but I, it's really kids who are a little bit older who really want things to be um, realistic looking and really get intrigued with perspective, etc. So for younger kids, recognizable is pretty exciting. So I'm not going to finish that. Um, I'm just going to leave it there. And that's basically the goose. If I were going to finish this drawing, I would fully delineate all of this. Um, and I did that on my finished piece, although as you can see here, I left some of the eggs white. Um, no real reason, obviously it would be a better drawing if I hadn't, but so be it. But here's what I'm talking about. So what you can do is you take darker and lighter, and then you can switch off to give your texture look to your basket. Um, and here I, I did black lines here and then drew over it. And you can see I used different shades of brown and white, et cetera, for the goose. And then also, you can see here, I added a shadow. Okay, so if you want to add a shadow, you can just do something called cross hatching, which is this. And that will also make it look a little more realistic. All right, enjoy.